we now want to provide our institutional grade data on chain to power all of these applications on Web3 who have a need to actually serve their institution clients in the future. I'm Fernando Vázquez, uh, president of Capra Markets uh, at Chainlink, and I'll be your host today. We are honored uh, to be hosting Dr. Alireza Dorfar, Managing Director in the area of, of Market Data at uh, Deutsche Börse. It is great to be having you know, this fireside chat after the announcement of our strategic partnership, but we'd love to know more about yourself, your background and your mandate at Deutsche Börse. Thank you very much for welcoming me here uh, and thanks a lot for um, chaining to arrange uh, this conversation. So, um, as you said, I'm responsible for the data commercialization and distribution area within Deutsche Börse Group, specifically for the market data, which is coming from the different exchanges within Deutsche Börse Group. So, um, Today, of course, we are here because of the partnership between Chainlink and Deutsche Börse Groups with the Union Data side, and we are looking forward to the conversation. I think you're being a bit humble about yourself and you know, your organization. Um, just for those who may not know the full scale, can you share why Deutsche Börse is often described as the backbone of Europe's financial system? And what role your data plays globally? Of course. So first of all, if people hear Deutsche Börse, um, often it is not clear what kind of companies are actually hidden behind this name. Um, I think there are major exchanges like Eurex, um, which is the largest derivatives exchange in Europe. Um, you've got the EEX, which is the European Energy Exchange, which is actually a powerhouse in terms of energy and power worldwide with brands like Nodal, uh, which are also part of the um, company. We have 360T, which is a leading um, FX um, trading platform um, and is also um, within the trading and clearing area of Deutsche Börse. And of course, um, if you um, look at the cash markets, Xetra and the German equities is part of our home as well. And then we've got the whole um, post-trade side, which at the end is Clearstream. Everybody knows um, what kind of relevance they play specifically in the custody and settlement area. And um, uh, because of recent acquisitions, we actually also have a big, big part in the buy side. Yeah. Um, Simcorp, uh, a large uh, portfolio software company, is part of Deutsche Börse as well. And in the data space, we've got ISS, which is an ESG provider, and, and of course in the governance space. And we have Stocks, which is a very, very large um, index provider. So um, the DAX and Stocks indices are part of the Deutsche Börse Group as well. And the whole family, as you can see, is um, quite diverse and captures the whole value chain um, which we have within capital markets, often in very leading positions based on the companies that are part and also multi-asset. And this, I think, makes uh, Deutsche Börse, specifically in Europe, a very unique company um, and also a key player if you think also about meeting the new with the I would say digital and also DLT and blockchain based technologies and the old traditional finance environment. So in that context, I think you've done something that is pretty brave. You're kind of in a way disrupting yourselves. Because um, again, I just mentioned before, you've just announced that Deutsche Börse will be publishing its market data directly on blockchains through a data link. Why is this announcement such an important milestone for Deutsche Börse and for the industry as a whole? As you said, I'm a little bit more humble in that sense. I believe that um, data from the traditional finance environment has been available on the blockchain for a long time now. But I think for us at Deutsche Börse Group and specifically in market data and services, it was until now actually the other way around because we have a lot of traditional players, which of course are our core clients, large hedge funds, investment banks, um, traditional financial banks. and um, they, of course, wanted to understand what's happening in the crypto space. So aggregating central um, exchanges on the crypto side, the big coin bases and so on, yeah, finances and, and, and taking all of this data and also on-chain information, actually, and providing it to the real world in that sense was what we did until now. And I think the idea now is how can we um, change this now? Because what we're seeing is that on-chain, there are a lot of players now that are becoming more sophisticated yep. and retail grade data or let's say data that is not on par with institutional uh, grade data um, is becoming actually a bottleneck 
to create environments where also traditional players want to be engaged on chain. And I think for us, and also partnering with you, who is active in this space for years now and is pioneering also, um, is great because we now want to provide our institutional great data on chain to power all of these applications on Web3 who have a need to actually serve their institutional clients in the future for robust and also um, data that is trusted already and is regulated. And I think that is a big, big difference um, and is also the reason why we now want to be part of this new game together with you um, to actually provide all of these institutionals now who want to be on chain, who want to be in the public area, um, a possibility to also get our institutional great data. I could agree more. Uh, I have a thesis that as we get more adoption, the standards will become higher, it will become more stringent. And I think places like yourselves are really well positioned to bring, again, institutional grade, high quality uh, data. Absolutely, yes. So from your perspective, um, how are financial institutions evolving in their approach to digital assets and tokenization? As you know, for quite a few years already, many financial institutions have been announcing POCs, pilots, you name it, was changed. And as part of that change to, again, hopefully broader adoption, uh, what's your approach now vis-a-vis -vis what you were doing three, four years ago? It's a really good question because um, actually a couple of years ago, Deutsche Börse acquired uh, Crypto Finance, which is a player in um, uh, Switzerland that is fully regulated under Mika and everything and is um, a, a real partner for institutions, but also crypto native companies for custody and trading services. And um, at the same time, beyond, let's say, the trading side, we actually established a company which is called 360X, which is really trying to uh, become a trading platform for many of the assets that we're now seeing, um, specifically on the tokenized um, environments. And if you look at Clearstream, which is a big, big player, of course, in the settlement and, and, and custody space, um, they have introduced D7, which is a platform to actually digitize issuance. And, and um, at some point, we want to be a hub for tokenized securities also um, beyond what we have now with stable coins and empty cryptocurrencies. Um, and as you said, there are many, many POCs out there. I mean, the big banks, the DTCC, uh, Euroclear, and, and we're not the only ones that are doing all of this. But I think what's important is that because we've invested so early with acquisitions, but also with organic um, um, build out of our environments, we now see that our traditional um, partners and our own clients that have been also evolving in this um, traditional meets digital meets blockchain that we now can actually serve them um, on par and actually can, can go hand in hand with them when they are exploring new business models um, in DLT, on the public blockchain or in the private. And um, I think that's maybe the beauty also of this partnership that we have here that potentially this can be a pairing because data is often an ingredient, is a first seed to be able to go through the whole capital market value chain from trading to, to um, the post-trade side. And um, for that reason, I'm actually looking forward um, to working together and also bringing the different assets of Deutsche Börse um, in, into, this, uh, into this game. Absolutely. We ourselves are your partners. We are seeing the demand uh, grow um, again. One, two years ago, we would get asked to get to POCs, do a pilots, help them with A, B, and C, but nothing tangible. That is changing now. But now what, I'm see, what we are seeing is that, okay, we are ready to go live, do something in production, but regulations in, in the EU are different than regulations in, in Japan, different from regulations in, in the US. And that's at the regulatory level. You look at the tech, there are many different blockchains, many different layer twos you name it. So there is a lot of uh, fragmentation. So in that context, how do you think institutions should think about interoperability as they build new tokenized products and services? Knowing that, again, this fragmentation is here to stay, to stay at least for a while. Yes. I mean, I'm really honest that for me, um, if you think about the way the traditional finance has been set up and how um, settlement, for instance, works and how many days it, it, it actually um, takes, um, T plus two that we currently have, for instance, going to T plus one and what is an, an effort this is for the whole organization uh, within each and every company involved in capital markets. 
and we see that um, there are a lot of potentials to improve. Let's say it like this. And um, interoperability has been built and engineered in the past 20, 30, 40 years in capital markets through a lot of rules and standards and joint effort on the technical and also on the governance front. And it is clear that um, on, let's say, the, the blockchain or if you think about, um, let's say, the, the new environments that we're building, this will take a long time until it is there, a long, long time. I look at Chainlink, to be honest, and see that you have achieved a lot of this. Yeah, I mean, looking at you and, and how many different um, chains you are at the end really um, engaged with, how many um, applications you are serving also, thousands in your data link product, for instance. I know that interoperability means a lot and also yep. means a lot to different people. But for us, engaging with you is, for instance, a first step because... We cannot be present in, in every blockchain. We cannot be present in, um, let's say, every environment. But I mean, you have done a lot of groundwork. You have done and evolved via um, your own efforts in the last years. And actually partnering with you will um, enable us to have a multiplicator effect, similar to what we're doing with Bloomberg and let's say LSEG, uh, now uh, um, informally Refinitiv. Um, as multiplicators and vendors, um, you have a very central role and we want to use this to actually make our interoperability play a little bit easier because it will take years yep. until we have such an environment as we have it in the TreadFi um, in, in the future. So maybe going slightly deeper, if you look at uh, traditional capital markets, uh, the way you issue bonds in Europe and the way you issue bonds in Japan is different. It has been around for decades, right? It's, maybe it's not going to change and that is okay. Do you see the same playing out uh, in, you know, in, in DeFi or in the DLT power world where there might not be alignment across different jurisdictions? Or do you think there's going to be one standard uh, on the regulatory level, tech level to rule them all? How do you see that as the end game? I think it is very, very difficult to imagine that in the next five years, maybe even in the next 10 years, we will have a consolidation of regulatory environments going forward. You can see if you look at the biggest blocks the European Union and also what's happening in the US how um, controversial this this topic is I mean I'm at least happy that that with the um, regulatory environment in Europe we've created some harmonization which wasn't there before Mika was there and before some of the let's say um, in ancillary regulations um, allowed um, passporting similar to what we have in the traditional finance environment to have this now um, in Europe but if you look at Asia, each and every country has their own jurisdiction, has their own regulatory environment. Um, if you look at South America um, and, and the US, very, very much the same. And um, sincerely, I cannot imagine that there will be one ring rules them all. It will be similar to what we have in, let's say, the digital space for consumers like a Google or a Facebook. If there is some... Um, I would say company in, in the um, DeFi space that can become so dominant that actually consumers, and that is on the, not on the retail side, but really on the institutional side, believe that this is such an unbelievably compelling service that all flock behind it. And you create these giants that, um, for instance, are the number one in search engine like Google. Something like this happens then on the custody front or something like this happens, for instance, um, on, I don't know, um, data delivery like, uh, like you, maybe then um, there is some harmonization, but not because of regulatory reasons, but because of consumer adoption, like a Bloomberg or Refinitiv on the blockchain, like, I don't know, a big, big player like DCC in the US on the blockchain, yep. you know, something like this will take years and a very compelling <laughs> service offering and maybe also some industry harmonization because it always is needed on top. But um, for me, I cannot imagine this to happen in the next five years and even 10 years. It is, is, is sounds like fantasy currently. We are fully aligned. I think interoperability is here to stay. And again, looking forward to you know, helping our customers uh, with their journey. Yes. One final uh, question. Many of the prospective consumers of your data on chain are telling us, Okay, today I can buy a tokenized security in this fintech broker dealer. But why would I do so? I could buy that in a you know, more traditional format. What can I get out of it? 
and again, our thesis is that uh, by buying a security in the tokenized format, you have access to what we call utility venues, right? You have access to a DeFi borrowing and lending um, uh, protocols, among other, you know, uh, utilities. So I, I think that's like a first step towards the convergence of DeFi and TradFi. But I would love to understand how you and Deutsche Börse see that convergence playing out and what role you think Deutsche Börse is going to play. So for us, um, I mean, we have two big areas within Deutsche Börse. As I said, it's the exchanges with Eurex and 360T and, and the cash market and so on. And you've got Clearstream on the other side. And I think what we are seeing is that collaborating together and actually covering the whole value chain, if you think about the cross between TradFi and DeFi, is so important. If you can um, trade stable coins and crypto assets on Deutsche Börse as a regulated market, and at the same time, we are also a hub for tokenized securities to be able to trade them. And we, for instance, have a sub-custodian in the crypto space with crypto finance working together with Clearstream. Then suddenly, a TradFi company that is working with us has done the KYC, has done all of the contracts, has a very easy time not to convince anyone that this is a new world where trust is an issue, but that they work with a trusted and, and very, very regulated entity like Deutsche Börse um, to capture this whole process. And I don't want to say that we are there in terms of overall interoperability in Deutsche Börse, but we have a lot of the pieces. And um, I would say... If you look at us in the next, let's say, 12 months, there will be a lot of evolutions on the Deutsche Börse side, um, tackling and also attacking um, more traditional um, uh, crypto um, trading players, but also um, becoming um, on the post trade side a very, very um, innovative um, player. And, and I'm looking forward to, let's say, the journey of Deutsche Börse going forward because I think we are positioned very, very well at this um you said it before, in terms of a frontier, which we need to break now to really get to the next level. And um, I, I sincerely believe that we have a good position. And with the cooperation now, where we're also providing data in this environment, um, very selective at the moment, but trying to broaden it out going forward based on consumer demand. So if anybody here has demand for Deutsche Börse traditional um, data um, in, in your um, data link environment, then we're really happy to listen to feedback and also um, expand our um, offering um, on chain. Maybe I think you have a really valuable asset that is trust. Uh, the FMIs have that almost by definition. And that trust, I think, is going to play a big role in the mainstreaming of DeFi. Some people think it's all about anarchy, you name it, but governance and trust are going to be play a big role. So we are looking forward to building future finance together. Thanks a lot for having me and um, looking forward to seeing how the corporation is going to develop. Thank, Thank you very you. much.